Welcome to the Volvo Ocean Race. It is leg two, day seven. After one week of sailing, the fleet is completely feeling the effects of the challenging doldrums conditions. They have been working hard overnight and it's still a tough race at the top and the conditions are very tight. Let's have a look at the tracker and see where they are now. Remember, we're in weekend mode and so we're only getting us once a day, so we're gonna have a look over the last 24 hours. Zooming in on the fleet, we can see that Dongfong Racing and Mafre, followed by 11th Hour Racing, are still tight at the top, but the battle is really one in the middle here between the two Dutch boats, Team Brunel and Team Axon Rebel, fighting each other for, for fourth position. And overnight, you can see there, we're going into the, uh, into the nighttime conditions. That's when you can't see the clouds that are challenging all of the boats with strong local, local effects. Big bear away there in the fleet. You can see that everybody got hit by that one. Here to talk with us about that battle is skipper of Axel Nobel, Simeon Tienpont, talking to us about what it's like to sail in these conditions with Team Brunel. I think the last uh, three days we've been battling hard, but sometimes, I mean, yeah, everyone's fighting hard, but sometimes a little bit in the wrong position, wrong spot, or just, you know, <laughs> different anticipation on the situation. And Brunel did a thing, did a good job, and it came, rolled over us this morning. And, um, but we're fighting hard for it. And um, it, it's a literally uh, every 100 meters. 100 meters and we tried to hang on and I think everything got a little bit more compressed anyway. We see uh, Vestas also on the horizon. Can you talk a little bit about leg one versus leg two? Do you feel like you're progressing as a team and building from your, uh, your experience? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, <laughs> leg one was a little bit of, uh, you know, you just need to do it and, you know, and, and, and you're not really looking ahead of, of a building or constructively, you know. Uh, getting sometimes the best out of the situation and, and now you are a little bit more stable situation and yeah we had a few learning moments yeah, I think in the beginning and and it's always a case of communication on board you know the communication between each other and and crew and uh, just to get that 100% performance and I think uh, that's pretty uh, it's coming uh, pretty rapidly you know to so hopefully we you know, we, we keep up the good work within all the sail changes, within, you know, gearing the boat to every time to a different mode when we hit different winds and different wind direction or in different sail setup. And that's just real important in this one design class. So you talk about <clears throat> what's coming up these next few weeks, next few legs, but um, what's on the horizon for the next 48 hours? Yeah, basically we got another big cloud to big cloud line to go through. I mean, the guys are pointing at it now actually on deck. You know, it's uh, some, some big clouds developing on the horizon. You know, big. you have to see, think of a big cumulus, you know, rising up in the sky. And we see them develop in front of us and you know that it's sucking a lot of air away. So you want to be on the wind, windward side of it. So the upcoming 48 hours coming to the equator will be still a little bit of uh, sometimes a meteor puzzle. So Jules is non-stop on the satellite pictures and trying to guide us best way through, you know, and... and um, so it's still a big cloud line to overcome. And then, of course, we have the equator coming up. So the youngsters on board are uh, <laughs> getting a little bit uh, nervous uh, little now bit and nervous. then. Uh, Neptune already gave a good harvest of flying fish uh, last night. So we got, a, we got a sheet bag full of flying fish waiting. Excellent. Well, hang on there. You're doing a great job. Uh, thanks very much for taking this time to talk to us. We'll, uh, we'll check in in a few days. All right, mate. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so flying fish in sail bags. Well, Skipper Simeon Tienpont talking about a rite of passage coming up for the new sailors on boards, those that have not sailed across the equator uh, before. Now, that's going to be probably disgusting, but it's part of maritime tradition, and uh, we're going to see all of this gory glory uh, tomorrow in The Daily Show after they have crossed the equator. Anyway, today is all about clouds, however. The sailors on board Dongfong Race Team and Vestas 11th Hour Racing had a crack at trying to explain what it's all about. Had some good clouds this morning at about 10 north. It's not always possible because the clouds are faster than us. When it's uh, black like that, you know. Uh... And this guy looks pretty scary right now. This is a big cloud and it's coming quickly. 
this is the equator and this is African coast and further west the doldrums are skinnier usually because the wind is kind of converging more and then by the end and this is Brazil over here then you further back you have to come to Cape Town but if we can cross east then the shorter distance we can go but the longer tri winds are so it could be windy it's gonna be windy there's gonna be rain anything could happen <laughs> And these are the kind of clouds that these, these sailors are talking about. Now, the thing to understand here is that these big clouds have two cycles in the course of their life. One where they grow and the other where they crash and when they, um, when they rain. So first off, there are massive updrafts that dominate these, um, these clouds and they're all about growing in this initial phase. What that means is you've got these big updrafts. Remember, heat rises and that kind of sucks in um, the air from all around them, which creates a local effect uh, which can be quite challenging to navigate. Uh, if we look then at their later period, you can see that we've got these downdrafts. Now, th these here are concentrated um, rain showers, and these are the ones that get exciting because uh, when it starts raining, it brings lots of wind uh, with them, and you can see these, this is a rain shower here, and that means that here on Matfre, there's going to be lots of wind, a big acceleration uh, coming on board that the sailors are going to have to deal with. Now, uh, Dongfong race team skipper, uh, sorry. <clears throat> now, Dongfong race team navigator Pascal Bidigoy has something to say about that. In general, uh, when the cloud is uh, black, it's because it's angry. So, <laughs> dark clouds are angry clouds, and I'm here to explain why. Today, not bicycle wheels, but I've got a cooking tray and some flour, and I'm going to be cooking up the doldrums cloud phenomenon. So, first off, we start with a little bit of, uh, bit of flour. I'm going to try and spread this out as evenly as possible. Now, <clears throat> making a bit of a mess here. So, the good thing is, I've got a vacuum cleaner. So. Let's go into the top camera here and we're gonna see how this works out. So just work with me here, this is a little bit crazy. We've got the um, northern hemisphere, uh, north is here, south is here, east is here. So where the boats are sailing at the moment, they've got a um, little bit of an eastern synoptic wind. However, they've got these big clouds that are coming in and it's kind of sucking all of the wind around. So let's just visualize that. Now what's going on there is as the cloud grows and expands up this way, it sucks in all of the local wind around. And so you end up with this kind of effect. So if you imagine the cloud is here and it's pulling in all of the wind. Now if you've got the synoptic wind here, you end up with this wind plus this wind right here. So in order to, uh, to best benefit from this, you want your boat here, the pink one, maybe it looks like SCA from last time, um, you, you've got an acceleration on this side and you want to be sailing down uh, this way to get your maximum, uh, maximum benefit. So that is what the sailors are talking about when the clouds are growing. However, the growing phase can be quite challenging to deal with because sometimes it starts to rain. Now, when it starts to rain, let me just visualize that with a little bit of uh, water here. There we go, nice sploosh. Um, so what happens is the raindrops fall out of the cloud and then they hit the water and they splay out in all kinds of directions here. So that's gonna visualize by my, uh, my cakey mess that I'm making here. And so we've got the water uh, and the wind splaying out away from the cloud. Now, what do you do there? Well, you've got, again, the eastern wind uh, synoptic here, and you've got a competition, a competition between the, the overall wind here and the local wind made by the cloud. So you don't want to be sailing here because there's no wind. What you do want to be doing is you want to be sailing on, on the front side uh, of the cloud, and that's when you're going to get these big acceleration zones up to 30 knots, and that's going to allow you to uh, accelerate down to the south and sometimes a little bit off to the west. So 
I've made a mess there, but that's my best way of explaining uh, the cloud phenomenon in the doldrums. Um, that's all that we've got time for you today. Uh, check in again with us tomorrow. We're back to a normal schedule with the quick fix uh, early on in the morning at 0700 UTC. And I'll have Niall again at 1300 UTC, and we'll get into the equator crossing action. Join us then. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.